Oh, well, okay, and welcome back to 3R Guitars, and these are these are 58 Flying V builds. Um, now, yesterday we glued up the bodies, and uh, uh, here they both are. Um, it's all come out fine and everything. You know, like I say, you, you, uh, you have to make sure that, um, you know, the joints, everything is square, and, um, you know, we did that kind of with the jointer or the planer and you know then you get good joints and your, your body wings aren't sort of you know it's not rocking anywhere sort of thing you know it's dead flat so that's quite that's obviously an important thing you know just accuracy at this stage uh, they're just perfectly flat and and um, you know accuracy at this stage saves you so much hassle later on and this um, thing of like cutting these little wedges out of here to do the clamping just worked fantastically. The only thing I don't like about it is obviously when you cut the, cut the body out of it, you know, you would have had a couple of nice strips of Carina mahogany as sort of lying around the workshop, which would, would have been really nice. But, you know, I can't, you don't want to sacrifice um, a build for just just something like that but um, I'm really pleased at this stage they're, they're looking good um, you know it's, it's a bit of a weird uh, a, a weird um, you know body blank to make because you know you've got the you know you've got this weird sort of angle you've got a cut and everything like that but um, like I say, these these cutouts. I mean, this is the bit we we cut we cut off there, off that bit of wood, and you can sort of put that along there and mark the. Uh, I mean, this this is the weird bit of wood we cut out of here for each side. When you cut these little notches to do the clamping, you can just use this as a guide and cut that out so you know those are parallel. So when you clamp clamp it together the wood won't tend to slide or anything like that um, I wouldn't like to do it by any other method I mean if you're thinking of making one I'd invest in a few tools sort of thing so um, what we're going to do next is I'm going to actually cut the body the body to shape um, and uh, you know I'm uh, that 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 would be nice so This is the this is the full size body template because the, it has the um, extension for going underneath the neck. This is the top, and the, these templates. I mean, you've got the the main body, the main pickup route in shape there around there, and then you've got the deeper legs that that do the legs of the humbuckers sort of thing, and then we've got the. <clears throat> control cavity there now these like I say these templates are from a, a firm called Euro Spruce and they're the only ones I could find that um, were quoted and I'm sure is correct as, as being accurate 1958 templates taken from an actual guitar if you look at all the other websites that do them they 58 type flying V these you know these come with quite a on the website with quite a, a description of the flying v they used and you know quite a lot of information on there so you know though i can't first hand verify it um you know i've used their stuff before um for les pauls and things like that and it's all i can say is they're very nice and um all the other stuff's been 100% accurate, so I kind of assume that's where we, you know, they're good. Um, my intention is to sort of cut this <clears throat> out as far back as I can, because when we were doing the joints here, just the nature of the planer, it was taking a little bit more from the front of the joint. I mean, it's called, like I said, I've described it before, but the planer just tends to take a bit more of a notch out the front sort of thing I mean I did everything I could to mitigate that and 
I can't see a damn gap there, but I'm gonna pull this back as far as I can and then cut out the shape there. I'm gonna start with this one because I've already got a load of lines on here that I don't want any confusion. So um, let's get on and do that. I mean, the um, I'll mark it out and then get back to you. Okay, I've got it marked out now. You can see on here. Um, I mean, obviously, you know, this seems quite simple, um, which it is. You know, you plonk the template on top, whiz round it, but d d don't be too hasty. Like I say, um, you know, I'm doing, I mean, it's not so bad with this wood, but, you know, if you shifty things around a little bit, you can find a nicer patch of grain or something like that. Um, but here the wood's quite, quite, you know, quite, quite fussy, so it doesn't really matter. But like I say, I've pulled it back just to avoid if there's any gap up there. Um, the crucial, crucial, crucial thing here is to line up the center line. Don't just chunk it on and think, oh, that's all right. And then <laughs> you're off center. So make sure, I mean, this template came with laser ticks on it kind of thing that mark the center line i've gone over that with a pencil and um you know also the wood joint with a pencil there so i've lined it up exactly um and we're all good uh, what i'm going to do here is you know there's so many straight lines on this i've got a new blade in the band saw um and i'm using the widest blade that i've got so it's easier to cut straight. So I'll just cut these all straight and then um, I'll put a narrower blade in the bandsaw to do the curves kind of thing. But, but one thing I like doing is um, I'd really like to cut as close to the line as I can. And the, the, the reason for that is that it saves router cutters. But the other thing is is when you come in say to cut you know when you're doing the body edge on the router when you come to do the end here there's a lot of end grain and if you've got a lot of scrap wood around the edge the router cutter can dig in and take a big chunk out so it's a good idea to you know um, cut a bands or close to the line as you dare take your time and then your router's got a lot less work to do. So I'll get you back when we're at the bandsaw. Okay, we're here at the bandsaw, and like I said, there's a nearly new wide blade in here. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is, you know, make sure your bandsaw bed is clean. There's no lumps of glue on it or silly things. I mean, I, I use it as a, a flat plate, really, when I want to get something really flat. Also, when you put the thing on, make sure it doesn't rock. Um, you know, you might have a bit of lumpy glue from the glue joint there, take that off. You don't want it rocking about um, or anything. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think we can go on it now and I'm gonna take my time. So um, there we go. To kind of have a little plan of where you're gonna do things, but it's not too bad with this with this body so we'll just get on with it. Well I'll get you back um, when um, <clears throat> We put the thinner blade in and do the rest. I mean, I just cut that out to, you know, just, just for a bit of video. So I'll get back to you and I'll cut the straights out and we're on to the curves. Okay, well, um, we've cut out the straight parts of the two bodies here. Um, you know, you can see the quality of the cut from this new blade. I mean, I don't buy cheap bands or blades. I buy them from a, um, a proper you know, an established tool shop called Axminster Tools. They're more expensive, but I just love them. And I'm swapping blades now, and you can see I'm gonna go from this wide blade that's about half an inch wide, um, 
to, to this very narrow blade that, that will go round bends. Um, some people, uh, I find that if I use a narrow blade to cut um, a straight line, you know, you get more risk of the, the blade as it goes through the cut sort of wobbling a little bit and things like that. I mean, um, uh, I mean, if you're doing like a strap body or something like that with a lot of curves in it, you have to use something like this. Um, and that's all I'd say is get a new one. The thing with band saw blades is, I mean, I'm running my finger down the, like any saw blade, I'm running my finger down um, the, the, t the teeth. Now you can feel that, you know, one tooth is bent that way and the next one is bent that way. So it actually cuts a wider slot than the back of the blade, hence it doesn't get stuck. And when you go round a lot of corners, and uh, corner, go round a lot of curves, um, that's called set. It, it, the, the, the teeth tend to be knocked a bit straighter sort of thing along the outside of the curve where they're taking a bit more force and over time the blade just becomes more and more useless at cutting straight and cutting nicely so um, they are consumable items but let's get this in and get cutting the curves enough waffle eh? We're all set up with a thin blade in now. It only takes a few minutes to change the blades, but uh, we'll see how this goes. get your back when I get it done. Well here's the two bodies cut out now and the bandsaw makes pretty short work of it and like I say as long as you invest in um, really nice bandsaw blades um, and they're new-ish um, you shouldn't have any problem. Once you, once you start having to struggle with them then it's time to throw them away and get a new one. Um, <clears throat> and if you do the wrong thing with a bandsaw blade you can you can um, basically fuck it up in a flash sort of thing so you know it's worth knowing how to set them up on your band saw sort of thing um, but just like with any saw you know you go through a nail with it it's useless after that sort of thing so just with a band saw be you know look after it a little bit but here we are we cut out now um, so the next stage is to attach these templates to the top um, to the bodies and then route round them to do the to do the sides and then uh, and we, then it starts getting exciting um uh, I, I'll I'll come back with that and um, you know when we're ready to do that and I'll show you how, how I do it right here we are at my uh, router table here now um, a router table is basically you've got the router underneath the table and the cutter sticks up and you know you've got a nice flat surface to to route around sort of thing um, I I don't like them in the sense that you've you, you you know you have like a cutter in your router doing like close to about six seven thousand rpm or something and it's above you know your hands are yeah the danger point of view if I if I if I can um, with confidence um, use a router with my hands above the cutter like normally you would I mean you could do that on here but it's um, it's a bit of a tall order because you're running the router around the edge and you can tip it things like that um, so for the quality of the job I prefer to use a router table but I'm always a bit very nervous of it sort of thing very careful um, this is the cutter I'll be doing uh, using it's a no expense spared white side cutter the firms called white side we make it and this router cutter was 
about £140. This is the cheaper version. Um, now, the difference is that you can see the cutting edges on this are actually spiralled, whereas on here they're straight. So basically this like shears the wood off as it spins, it cuts, you know, it cuts it at an angle and shears it away. This just hits it and chips it off. Um, and when you come to go round corners like these where you've got the grain sticking out of the end, I, I would really never really use a cutter like this because, you know, the way it turns, um, you know, it might come around this way okay because it's like pushing the wood out, but once you get round the bend, the cutter is going directly into the end grain and you will end up with a huge mess, um, big chunks taken out. Um, so I'll be using this router cutter and this has got bearing on the top and the bottom which uh, is, you know, so you can, you, you can follow the template with your bearing guided router on the top or the bottom. Now I've, I've screwed this template on here and here and um, it's absolutely perfectly lined up with the centre line which you obviously have to make sure. Um, I've put a screw there, you won't see that in the end result because um, that's where the neck, the neck joint is. Um, and here it will be underneath the, uh, the, 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 the triangular sort of tailpiece thing and that's where one of the pins goes to hold it in, one of the riveting nails. Um, just when you do this make sure, I mean this template is really good because it's got little cutouts, tiny little cutouts at each end so you can perfectly line it up with the centre line. Um, I mean I've countersunk these screws, I've drilled pilot holes so I'm not forcing them in or anything so everything's perfect there. So what I'll do, I'll get all set up with this route a bit and then I'll get back to you. Okay, we're ready to start this now. We've got the, 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 the cutter in here. I noticed that the bearing was a, bit, was a bit tight so I took it off and cleaned it, put a bit of WD-40 on it so it's nice and spinny now. And that will run across the, the template here. Um, if your bearing is, is stiff and doesn't turn, you're obviously going to be uh, burning the edge of your template away, which you don't want. I've also been over this um, router table and felt it all over with my hand to make sure that there's no lumps of glue left on it from when you glued the bodies together. And so it's nice and smooth, so the body's not going to wobble or anything. So the idea is now we can trim the sides and uh, let's do that. Uh, give it a go. Yeah, I mean we're doing we're doing okay on that. That's fine. It's trimming up nicely. I'm just wondering if the uh, the bearing is dropping away from the cutter a bit because I haven't done the collar up tight enough that holds the bearing up. So I'm just going to check that. Okay, I'm absolutely covered in sawdust, but um, you can see that we've done the first pass around here now and the, you know the quality of that that cutter there's no tear out or anything so we've got the rest to cut off now I mean obviously when you adjust this the bearing has got to be <coughs> on the template 
um, so you can only cut as deep as the bearing will allow you or the height of the cutter. So there's, you've got a couple of choices now. You can either um, run it further up, you know, wind the router cut further up and do the rest, or you've, with this cutter you've got the other bearing you could, you could put on the top, turn it upside down and then do the remainder which is what I'll do. Um, so quite an easy job, just get the other bearing, put it on, there's an Allen head screw you put in the top that's actually quite tight. So make sure the bearing spins freely. Um, now what you can do is use the part you've already cut correctly, um, wind the router down a little bit, so you're just running it along that way and you're cutting off the remainder that you've left, so let's do that. go we've got the bit cut out there you do get a slight for some reason you do get a demarcation between two cuts you've done but it's all within sanding distance um, so you know we've got a flying v-shaped body now and let's unscrew it in front of you There we go, really nicely finished edge on that. Um, so we're getting somebody, I'll get the I'll get the other one done now and um, bring you back. Well hi there, back from the routing table covered in sawdust, but you can see the quality of cut that that uh, router cutter gives. Um, you remember I had that little edge on it where I was using the top bearing. What I actually did was um, I went round again and um, used the bottom bearing, if you like, pushed the cutter further up and used the bottom bearing and it's taken that uh, edge mostly away. Um, so now we've got two absolutely perfectly shaped um, flying V bodies there which is very satisfying and they're, they're actually like quite nice and light um, uh, which is really good and um, one thing you know when when I put the the, the router template on um, template on to route to um, I actually screwed it onto the onto the body um, on the center line and I said that you know okay we'll do it in bit where where you won't see any of the, um, the screw holes anyway, but I mean, lots of people advocate advocate the uh, um, super glue and masking tape trick. I wouldn't use that for something like this. You know, um, it's just too much of a risk. Um, you know, if that gives up and the te the template jerks off, the tops like I mean, you've just wrecked completely wrecked the body. I'd only use, I think I'd only use um, templates that are super glued and taped um, is where I'm routing on top you know so you can actually see what's happening and stuff like that so uh, yeah I'm, I'm happy with them um, screwed on 
now um, yeah it's nice to get to this stage and we're all we're all done um, so next I think um, is I'm going to actually investigate um, uh, cutting the, ne the neck mortise um, in for the body and uh, we'll see we'll see about that I mean, we have to decide which is the top and which is the bottom of the body kind of thing um, I don't think it really matters um, I think we're okay but I'll just go and get the neck mortise now and we'll go from there